It is both a privilege and an honor to have Oregon Senate President Peter Courtney as our commencement speaker today. Senator Courtney has served the state of Oregon for over four decades, the longest legislative career in the state's history. In addition to his public service career, he has been dedicated to the Western Oregon University, where he is retiring after 30 years of service, serving as an assistant to six presidents and teaching communications and freshman experience courses. During this time at Western, his time at Western, Senator Courtney also chaired the commencement committee for 20 years. Each year, he would remind the committee that this ceremony, which, is, which you, our graduates, are participating in today, is the most important milestone of your college career. Because of his dedication to our students and the state of Oregon, I believe that is very fitting that he is our commencement speaker today. Senator Courtney earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in political science and master's degree in public administration from the University of Rhode Island. He earned a law degree from Boston University. He and his wife, Margie, live in Salem and have three adult sons, two daughter-in-laws, and one grandson. Senator Courtney, the podium is yours. The uh, president forgot to say that I also said the commencement shouldn't have a commencement speaker. <laughs> I, uh, I have very strong feelings about commencement speakers. Uh, every year, I uh, am taken by the national media. They highlight commencements across the nation. And what they do is they go to the commencement speaker. Some individual who's internationally famous, well-known, and paid a ton of money. Somewhere I say, what about the student? If I had my way, I would have stopped right after these commencement student speakers and gone right to degrees being handed out. I don't know what's worse to turn 72 this coming Thursday on July, June 18th, or have the graduating class that you've been asked to give the commencement speaker to cheer when they hear you're not gonna be up here long. <laughs> How do I communicate with you? How do I communicate with individuals so far away? They're in a different time zone. Way to my left and my right, way up there, leaning against that concrete wall. Because I'm afraid of heights, you're scaring me up there. <laughs> How do I communicate with you when there's four generations between you and me? I'm scared. <laughs> I am scared. I'm an elected official who's given hundreds and thousands of speeches, and this speech scares me to death. My biggest fear is that I'll bore you. <laughs> what do I say? And so, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to let this old man borrow from his own personal experiences. I'm not going to quote from some historical figure. I'm not going to quote from some famous person. I want to do it just in my personal experience, but please be patient with me and allow me to do it to explain something I'd like to offer you. But it's not about me. You got to believe this. It's about you. Don't be afraid. Don't be like me. 
If you looked, and I'm not a religious man, at the Bible, and the reason the Bible fascinates me as a piece of literature is that it's filled with phrases and words that when they express an idea, it's magnificent. Fear not, be not afraid, do not be afraid, don't be afraid. 300 to 400 times, some or one of those phrases appears in the Bible. Years ago, in the hills of West by God, Virginia, in the coal mining areas where I was when I was a teenager, I'd go in and sit at the foot of my grandmother's bed. My grandmother helped raise me because my mother had Parkinson's disease. She was so sick, we had to take care of her. And my grandmother, with her little rosary beads in her hand, reading her little Reader's Digest, I worshiped her. And I'd sit at the end of the bed and I'd say, Grandma, I'm so scared. I'm so worried, I'm agonized, I don't know if I can do well in the football game. I don't know if I can get the grades to make mom and dad happy. I don't know if anybody will ever like me. And my grandmother said to me once, and I'll never forget it, Peter, oh Peter, my grandson, weary and fear or like a rocking chair. They'll give you something to do, but you don't get anywhere. So Peter, Go sit in my rocking chair because it's a whole lot better for you. <laughs> I worship her. I miss her. I'd give anything if she could be here today. Don't be afraid to make a decision. Do you know how many times in politics the failure to make a decision has led to disastrous consequences? Don't be afraid to make a decision. Even if it ends up wrong, you're not going to get away with that very long. You cannot make them all right. Don't be afraid to make a decision. Don't be afraid to lose. Oh, this is easy for me to say. I have lost. Oh, do not be afraid to lose. Oh, it's going to hurt. Oh, it's going to hurt. Don't be afraid to lose and to try again and again and again. You gotta keep trying. You gotta trust me on this. You gotta keep trying. Don't be afraid to start at the bottom. Don't be afraid. And watch this one. This has already been referred to one of these out, by one of these outstanding students. If you don't know what you're doing tomorrow or the next day, I'll bet some of you don't. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And if you have a plan, I'm going to tell you, don't go get scared when it gets loose on you. Because it will get loose on you. I had a plan. Want to hear about my plan? I'll tell you about my plan. When I was on the Salem City Council, I was hot. When I was in the legislature in the early 80s, I was hot. I had it all going. I had all the plan I was going to be in local government, state government, and federal government, and I run for Congress. I was hot. And then I ran into the May 1984 primary, and on that night when the first election results came in, I was 10 points down and I never got any closer. I was crushed. I had no job. Margie, who's somewhere in the audience, my wife, and I had a little boy named Peter. I had no job. And I got a call from a guy named Myers. He said, I want you to come work with us. He was the president of Western Oregon State College. I would not be here today talking to you if I hadn't lost, I had to make a change in the plans. Don't be afraid. You know, my older brother is a remarkable person. 
Something was said about him in the military I'll never forget. Said to my father. He was a young lieutenant. And they said, he was a senior officer, you know what you like about Lieutenant Courtney? He makes the best of the hand that is dealt him. Don't be afraid of the hand that's dealt you. Don't be afraid. Fear not. Make the best of it. Make the best of it. You know, I, I, uh, I know you're thinking I'm talking too much about fear. But I'll tell you something. This one really is emotional for me. You see all those fans in the stands? I'm going to tell you something. They'll always be in your grandstands. If you were not here today, because maybe you hadn't fulfilled all the credits, the requirements, they'll always be in your grandstand because they loved you with a powerful love, the likes of which you can't describe, unconditional love. They're right up there. They're over there. They're over there. Don't you be afraid to love like that. Even if it hurts, don't be afraid. The power of what they feel for you, which means they don't love you because they love you because you are. There is no more powerful love. Oh, I wish I'd known that when my grandmother was still alive. I wish I'd known about unconditional love. I never got to say how much I cared about it. Well, I'm going to say a couple more things and to be done because you gave that loud cheer for me to get back to my seat. <laughs> the hardest thing for me to do is to leave this campus today because I know I'll never come back the same way. The hardest thing for me to do is to leave politics because I'm afraid of retirement. You know, there's got to be that time in life you say, I've done all I can do. I can't do anymore. I know they got these cool phrases, you got to move on, you got to let go. I'm too old to know those words. So I put it in my words, you got to say, I've done all I can do. Peter, you got to, you got to go, you got to mosey. You know, on that pony, that palimony, palimony horse or whatever, I used, can't even get the name right. You got a mosey. The last thing. I've been here since about 7 o'clock this morning. I was asked to MC the banquet over here that we put on every year to thank the faculty and staff. Because I'm aware that my personality can offend people. <laughs> that my style can be too flamboyant. That I frolic too much. I was scared to be me. I wasn't me this morning. And then I went to an event about naming a building after me. I didn't know what to do. I still wasn't me. Years ago, my dad said something to me. Dad, I don't know what I'm going to do. I've lost Congress. I'm black. And he says, Peter, just be Peter. A month later, he was gone. When I visit his grave, in the plains of Rhode Island, as I walk from the car to find his stone, all I think about is those words, just be you, be you. You're going to get hit. You're going to get criticized. You're going to doubt who you are and what you are. I remember I used to teach speech here, and I had sometimes a student would come up to me and say, I want to give a speech like you, Professor Courtney. No, 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 no. You don't want to speak like me. You want to speak like you. Popeye the Sailor, famous cartoonist, once said, I am what I am. That's all I am. 
Well, Popeye, you had it right. And so, students, graduates, loved ones, be not afraid. Be not afraid. You got here, didn't you? And tomorrow you'll get there too. You and them, because you're together on this. And if at some time that fear, that anxiety, and that worry is overwhelming you, just remember, maybe you can find a rocking chair. It would be a whole lot better for you. Be not afraid, graduates. Be not afraid. Thank you, Senator Courtney.